Hi everyone, nice to meet to see you here. Today, I will talk about how we use Rust to build a distributed transactional key value database. Before we start, let me introduce myself. My name is Tang Liu, a Chinese guy, as you can see, and I'm the chief architecture at Pinke. And I have been the developed distributed database, TiDB and TiKV. I'm also open source lover and have developed some open sources like, like this DB, GoMySQL, GoMySQL Elasticsearch, and the Rust Perm issues, etc. Oh, that's all. This is today's agenda. At first, I will give you a brief introduction about uh, why we build a distributed transactional key value database, the problem for us. Then, I will show you the hierarchy we thought for the database, and at last, I will show you how we combine them all into a database. Okay, let's begin. So, when we want to build a distributed transactional key value database, we found that we need to, we meet many, many problems, and we need to conquer many, many challenges, like this. Oh, oh where, where is that black? We may must Guarantee our database is data consistency, and our database is scalable and stable, and has a high performance and has a high availability. Of course, we must let our database follow the acid compliance and many other problems we need to conquer. So, that's the, that this award nightmare for us. So, what can we do? In a traditional Chinese saying. A high building, a low foundation. So, there are many, many things we need to conquer, and but we can build it from bottom to the top, with different hier hierarchies. So let's begin. But at first, uh, but at first we need to choose a language to build it. Uh, it's Rust. Here, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here you guys are very familiar with it, so I won't talk about it anymore. And let's give it. So let's build, start to build our database from scratch. The first thing is that uh, because we are a database, the, fir the first problem is how we can save our data in the local machine. And because we are key-value database, so we are choose a key-value story engine. There are many key-value engines in the world, like RocksDB, like LiveDB, Wild Tiger, and etc. And you can use even build it by yourself. But here we choose RockDB. Why? RockDB use LSM tree. As you can see, LSM tree has a high performance for the write, especially for the random write, and has a good performance for the read. And the RockDB team itself does lots of optimization to speed up the RockDB, and provided a lot of features about like ingest data file, delete range to let the user Build their service on top uh, easily on top of the RocksDB, and by the way, another reason is that RocksDB is very stable and it can use in the my rocks and the Ro Mongo rocks DB. So we decided to choose RocksDB. Here is the project we because RocksDB is a C plus plus library and we wrap our own Rust wrapper here. You can have a try if you want to use RocksDB in your Rust project. RocksDB is cool. But it can only save your data in the local one machine. If the one machine crashed, oh, your data is lost. So here we need to find a way to replicate our data into multi machines to guarantee our data safety. Of course, we must guarantee our data consistency. How we can do? Here we use Raft. Anybody here know Raft? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Raft. Raft is a consensus distributed consensus algorithm. It uh, is based on the replica log. When the client wants to write something to the service, and we, we first we will use a Raft to append the command to the Raft log, and then use the Raft algorithm to replicate the Raft command into the multi machines. After majority of the load except the Raft log, we can think the Raft log is committed and can apply the Raft log to the same machine. Then return the result to the client. Using Raft can help us to keep the data consistency and do the replication automatically. Raft is good, but it can't, fit, it can't save all your data in one machine 
if when your data grows huge and huge. So how we, how we can do here? We can, when your data grows large and large, we can split our data into multi-graph group. Here you can see that we, we so treat our raw data as a infinity order hash map, uh, sorry, map, and split, and split our raw data into different key range. And each key range corresponds to a raft group. Here we use, again, we use a multi raft to support the data horizontal scalability. So how can we do this? For example, if we now we have three nodes, A, B, C, and we add a new load D, and we want to transfer, move our data, the reading to the data uh, from C to the D, how we can do? Luckily, we can use a raft interlar algorithm membership change, like this. We can use a raft membership change, config change, and load directly to add a new replica of region 2 and load D. Then, we can use a raft config change reload to remove the replica from C. As you can see, using raft, we can we easily transfer the data from load C to load D and do the, does the, do, and do the data horizontal scalability. Very easy, that's cool. And we build our own rough, rough implementation here. It's very stable, and you can even, you, if you want to build your, uh, use a consensus algorithm in your service, you can have a try, and, it's, and you can even use it in your production environment. Now we have multi raft to support the data transaction, the, the, the data horizontal scalability, but another problem is that the, for the distributed transaction. Let me consider the following case. Uh, for, for example, for the bank transfer, if you want to transfer some salary from account A to account B, but I'm not keep both A and B are in different loads. So here we need, uh, are in different multi, multi raft groups. And here, here we need to con solve the problem that how we can keep the data consistency crossing multi load, crossing multi load, crossing multi raft groups. Um, that's easy. We can use the traditional two phase commit, two PC. But as you, as you can see that two PC has some problems. So here we use an uh, optimized two phase commit inspired by Google Packlater. And it has a multi version concurrent control and uh, provide the snapshot isolation and uh, support the optimization transaction. Um, I don't. I won't talk more about the distributed transaction here because it's not related in this topic. So I will skip it. Skip it. If you pay attention to it, you can search the Pecolita paper and uh, learn more. So now, things got better. Uh, a lot of problem is that because we are a distributed transact, distribute the database. And we have many machines and many services, and each service needs to communicate with each other through network. So how we can do this? Here we choose gRPC. gRPC is a RPC framework developed by Google and has used in many pro famous projects like Kubernetes, like XCD. And gRPC has many languages supported. You can use Java, you can use C++, Golang, PHP, Python, Lua, etc. Many languages supported. And uh, gRPC is based on HTTP2. So you can get the benefits of HTTP2 directly, like HTTP2S. H oh, sorry, HTTPS. So here we decide to use gRPC. gRPC uh, Google has provided a C, official C gRPC library. Uh, has four API, like Eulery, client streaming, server streaming, and duplex streaming. They are very powerful, but unlucky. This API, this API are asynchronous. As you can see, writing asynchronous code is a nightmare for us. And uh, you can even get sucked into the core back here. Um, but luckily, in Rust, we can use futures. Here is a simple, simple example. When we call the Eulery API, it will return a future. And then we can use the future wait and we'll put the future later. So here we use the Rust Futures to provide a synchronous API for easily use. And we build our own gRPC wrapper here. If you want to use your gRPC in your own service to build your RPC framework, please have a try. So 
um, max as the database take sh take shift. So a lot of things that we can the database can work well, but uh, a lot of things is that how we can guarantee our database work well. Um, here we can use some monitor to monitor our to uh, check our database can work well or not. Currently, Prometheus is a mo is a famous monitor in the world now, so we decided to use it. Prometheus provides four types like counter gauge histogram, histogram and summary. But here we only we care most of the three counter gauge and histogram. Here is a simple example, and you can see you can use a reject counter to re to get a counter as Prometheus counter and the increment counter. We also built our own Prometheus client in the Rust. You can have a try. And this Rust client is, is the suggested in the Prometheus official doc, or have it already. So you can try have a try it. Now, finally, let's go here, testing. In my opinion, testing is the most important thing in to build a distributed database. May, um, we need to because we need because we are building a database and we need the customer trust us and we we may must ensure that our data their data in our database cannot be lost cannot be corrupted. So how we can do how can we do this? I think the only way is to do more do testing, and we need to pro do many many testing. And uh, for example, we need to do unit traditional unit testing, integration testing, and even we can do chaos testing, many many more. But I don't cover them all here. But here I will mention about a fair point injection testing. Fair point injection is the fair is the fair point inspired by free BS fair. And uh, you can see the example here. Here we you reject we reject a fail point uh, like in the function foo, and uh, trigger the failure outside when the program ran and uh, enter the function panic. Ooh, that's cool. So this is our Rust fail point uh, implementation. If you want to inject some failure into your service and uh, do some funny things, and uh, you can have a try. Well, that's all. And now we can. I have mentioned the word hierarchy about. And now let's combine them together. This is the whole architecture of war from the bottom to the top, Rust DB to save data using Raft to replicate data and do the data horizontal, and had MCC and the trans distributed transaction API use gRPC to co for communication and use Prometheus for monitor. That's cool. So this is the word. The whole thing, TechKV. TechKV is a distributed transactional key value database. And of course, it's written in Rust. TechKV, uh, many users have used it in TechKV. Um, many users, TechKV is used in many in the uh, product environment. And uh, as I can see, I can know that uh, one TechKV cluster has now deployed about 140 machines. For one type of cluster in production, and from now on, we hear no one complain us that their their data is lost. That's cool, but this is not this is not our final goal. Here, I will ask you a question, which I don't mention, which I don't ask you before at first. That's why we will we want to build a distributed transactional key value database. We not only for the TechKV, we aim higher. First, we want to build a distributed relational database. This is TiDB. TiDB, we built a MySQL layer on top of TechKV to provide a distributed online uh, transactional processing solution. You can use TiDB like using MySQL directly, with nearly uh, with low compatibility. And we also want to build a distributed analytic database. This is Thai Spark. We can you can run the Apache Spark on top of TechKV directly, and to provide and we provided a distributed online analytic database solution. 
So, what we saw here, what's there we want to go? We want to go to build a hybrid transactional analytic processing database. This is the big future of war. As you can see that, we have uh, TiDB to provide on OLTP and uh, TiSpark to provide OLAP. And you can, if you want to use raw transaction key value, you can use TiKV directly. This is the whole picture, and this is our final goal. Our, uh, and our ultimate goal is to use one database for your data. Yes. That's all. Thank you. Oh, by the way, we are hearing you. We are coming to China. You want to pay increase, pay attention to us. Uh, uh. Three questions at the back. Oh, you see, you asked me that, but how to how we handle the deadlock in the distributed transaction? Yeah, yeah. Deadlock. Oh, okay. Um, because the, our transaction model is optimistic, uh, mystic transaction. So, if you may, so for transaction A, want to handle a handle key A and B, and uh, transaction B handle want to also want to handle A and B, and we were, at first we uh, sort a the world keys like A and B, and then commit it. So, because the commit key is is sorted, so it can't be dot dot. Yeah, yeah, order key before committed it. Yes. So you mentioned that you support snapshot isolation. Yes. Um, do you have plans of extending that to like serializable snapshot isolation? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, that's, a good, that's a good question. Because, oh. oh, you asked me that we already support a snapshot isolation. So how we can uh, support a uh, uh, serialize, serialize, uh, S -S -S sorry, SI, SSI, yes. Um, now, because uh, you, as you can see, we support MVCC, and MVCC is only for SI. So if we want to use support SSI, we, we, we must let a user to write a circle like Slack for update, explicitly to support SSI. That's that's uh, maybe that's the only thing, only way we can do here now. Um, what is your experience with the Java C library? So you're using the C one right now, and I know there are people who are trying to write a ninety plus. What is your experience, and what are your plans? Oh, you asked me that. Um, we are building a C wrapper, but um, many other people like. Uh, sorry, I don't know his name, but I know he is the author of MIO. I had building a pure Rust implementation. Uh, but why we still choose the gRPC wrapper? Because we have we built a C, the we want to use gRPC about one year ago. At that time, <laughs> there's no stable implementation, and and there's only a, the only stable implementation is the C web, is the C core libraries. We have to use it. And uh, if and um, but later if the pure Rust implementation is coming. And we can, we will to come to try to use it. This is our plan. <laughs> oh. um, which SQL standards do you support? Or is SQL not possible? Or which oh. query languages can I use to query oh. data? Oh, yes. You asked me which SQL dialect do we support? Uh, I see that. Sorry. TiDB, we built a MySQL layer on top of TiKV. So you can work the circle dialect of Ty MySQL, we support it. But we don't support, uh, sorry, we don't support, uh, we, sorry, sorry, I, I have two. Uh, no, 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 we support all join, especially not supporting MySQL. Uh, supporting PostgreSQL, we will support join. We will not support the uh, procedure. <laughs> Yeah, maybe more the circle function we supported, and we, so you can trans, you can convert your, change your visibility from the MySQL to migrate your visibility from MySQL to the TiDB directly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does uh, TiKV support Python? Yes. Yeah. Uh, 
functionality to, for instance, subscribe to the transaction log? Yeah, uh, you, you, you asked me that, that type KV supports some API for the transaction API. Uh, of course, because as you can see there, type KV must provide the transaction API. So, like, so, like user you like this, like use this, oh, sorry. Like this, user can use like this, say use begin to start a transaction, and you get, use call get, and use call set, and then commit a transaction. This all both supported in TechKV. No, but can someone else, like, um, listen to the transaction log? Like a, like a separate service? Like, like a bin log tailor. Oh, you ask me that, you, does type KV support bin log? Or the? Well, for instance, if you were to have um, a separate site, maybe it's something to take offline. Uh, you need to do small audit trail or yeah. have some debugging of what's going on this year. If you can have some centralized node that gets told everyone, everything that's going on centrally. Yeah. And it doesn't need to be high, high availability, but more for debugging purposes and so on. Uh, sorry, I still can't understand. So you might want tooling that will listen to say um, there's been a transaction and you want some other tool to be made aware that there's been a transaction inside of the key value store. Like transaction monitoring, possibly. Like transaction monitoring? Like, like external watching of the transaction log. Oh, like MySQL binog. Yes? Yeah. Oh, we have a, we have a binog integration, but not in TypeKV, it's in TypeDB. Because you can say, well, well the uh, circle is through TypeDB, so can TypeDB can record the circle, well, the circle and uh, do record in our binog implementation. But this binog is not different, it's different from the MySQL. And we can use the bin and even you can use the binog to synchro synchronize all the, your data from the TDB to other to other services like sync to the Kafka or Elasticsearch or even uh, another TDB. We can use the binog. Yes. Do you folks do like a like predicate pushdown or anything oh. for scaling out? Uh, pushdown. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a good question. Like, uh, I don't mention push down here in TypeDB because it's not relative in this topic. Um, but you can, see. sorry. I don't mention here that TypeDB not only provide the transaction API, it still provide a composite API. When you look at composite is the same the, the concept in the edge base. And you can push down your some logic to the TypeDB directly and do some calculation and return the result. We, we, we already do this. But uh, I don't mention it. So. Yeah. Thank you.